Hi, I'm Dr. Ryan Bober from AskUMD. Today we have a really important topic to discuss in the summer, sunscreen. We're all ready to go outside and play in the ocean and whatever else you like to do in the sun, but there are some risks to your skin health, and that's the UV radiation from the sun. So it's easy to walk into a pharmacy and pick any product off the shelf, but there's so many and it's often overwhelming. How do you make sense of all this? And what's the right one to choose? And how do we even apply it? So let's answer all these essential questions together. Before we slide into the exciting world of sunscreen, let's take a minute to review because not all sunlight is bad. In fact, vitamin D is a molecule which is important in bone health, which the sun is necessary in creating. And even casual exposure to sunlight, 5 to 15 minutes a day, a few times a week, can be enough to meet most people's needs. In addition, there's a correlation between the amount of light that's available in a certain area and people's moods. And finally, certain skin conditions, such as eczema and psoriasis, improve with light or phototherapy. The reason why the sun is potentially dangerous is because of the ultraviolet radiation that accompanies it. All light exists on a spectrum, as we can see here in this diagram. The shorter the wavelength, the more harmful the light rays can be to your skin. Ultra is the Latin word for beyond, since, as you can see in this diagram, it is the set of wavelengths immediately adjacent to violet on the visible color spectrum that, as humans, our eyes can perceive. Therefore, ultraviolet is beyond violet. Ultraviolet radiation can lead to photoaging, or skin aging, sunburn, skin cancer, and deeper pigmented skin. In addition, there are harmful effects to various parts of the eye as well, an example being snow blindness seen in mountaineers. There are two types which are important to understand, UVA, and that's not the college, and UVB. By the time sunlight reaches the ground, only a small fraction of the total light waves are ultraviolet. 95% of these small fraction of waves are UVA, and the remaining 5% are UVB. UVA is responsible for photoaging, while UVB is associated with the more classic concerning cancerous changes, such as melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, and squamous cell carcinoma, all different types of skin cancers. Everyone needs sunscreen but some people need it more than others based on their skin type. This is called the Fitzpatrick scale. It looks at different skin types and their likelihood of getting cancerous changes from sun exposure. And the skin types on the left are more sensitive to ultraviolet radiation and are more likely to burn rather than tan. The purpose of sunscreen then is to filter harmful UV radiation from the environment, mostly from the sun. There are lots of different filters available. There's 17 different types that are approved by the FDA because sunscreens are regulated as drugs, even though they're over the counter. Some of these filters are organic, which absorb UVB radiation and dissipate it as heat. So things really heat up, especially in the summer. And then inorganic filters, which are the ones that help you reflect UVA radiation. So you need both components in order to have a comprehensive UV radiation barrier. What is sun protection factor, or SPF, which is all over the bottles? This is essentially the amount of sunscreen that you need in order to protect a certain amount of your skin from getting red when you compare it to the same exposure of sunlight in that skin without the sunscreen. So it's a ratio. And there's different levels. SPF 15, as you can see in this chart, absorbs 93% of, this, of the UV radiation from the sun. SPF 30 absorbs 97%, and SPF 50, 98%. So what this means is that about 7% of the radiation is getting through to your skin with SPF 15, but less than half of that with SPF 30. Therefore, SPF 30 is twice as protective as SPF 15, but not nearly the same ratio when you compare SPF 30 to SPF 50. 
So in summary, SPF 30 is the minimum that you should use, but going higher and higher doesn't provide any huge marginal additional benefit. But remember, SPF is a measure of protection from UVB radiation, which is the one that is responsible for certain cancerous conditions, but it doesn't give you any protection against the other 95% of UVA radiation that reaches the surface in your skin. So how do you protect against that? Well, you look for something called broad spectrum. So in the United States, there's no formal rating system, there is in Europe, for UVA radiation protection. You just have to know that because it's regulated by the FDA, broad spectrum has to meet certain quality standards that they set to ensure that you're getting enough protection from UVA as well, which is involved in sun burning. After you understand SPF, there's still lots of different options. Sport, water resistant, what does this all mean? Well, if you're going to be walking in the Amazon underneath a canopy where there's not as much direct sunlight exposure, SPF 30 might be okay as long as it's not raining. But if you're going to be cliff diving into the ocean off the coast, then something like water resistant or very water resistant is going to help you the most. This basically means that it's formulated in a way that guarantees that for 40 minutes, a water resistant formula will maintain the same level of sun protection factor as if you were not in the water and a very water resistant formulation will last 80 minutes before you have to reapply in general and maintain the same level of SPF. So then finally, if you think about liquids and sprays, these are often very convenient for application because they're just a quick spray. They are often alcohol based and they, re and they um, evaporate quickly leaving a cool residue on your skin, sometimes an oily layer as well. The only problem with these is that although they do guarantee the same level of SPF, it's often a little blotchier and if there's any wind, it can get into your eyes or spread to other people. So just keep that in mind when you think about different formulations. So this is the most important feature in maintaining the level of SPF. Because if it's not applied properly, an SPF 30 may only be as good as an SPF 15. So for an average adult, it takes 6 to 9 teaspoons of sunscreen to cover the sun exposed areas sufficiently and you should apply 20 minutes before you go outside in order to allow the sunscreen to form a protective layer and you should apply repeatedly at least every two hours if you're doing normal conditions but if you are sweating or swimming even though you're using a, a waterproof or water resistant or very water resistant formulation it's still best to apply more frequently than the stated numbers just to be sure that you're getting the most amount of protection so where do you actually apply it? Well, the teaspoon rule will tell you that you have one teaspoon to your face, one to your neck, one to each arm, unless your arms are quite big, or two to each leg, and then two on the front and two on the back. Okay, and that should cover all the surfaces sufficiently. Don't forget the areas which we often see cancers arise. The nose, behind the ears, just over the brow, and then the back of the neck. These are also important areas to not forget. Now finally, is there anything else we should be doing now that your skin is super protected? Well, don't forget photoprotective clothing. Don't forget UV protection in your eyes, and make sure they wrap all the way around and that they're rated UV 400 or higher so that you can make sure that your eyes are protected as well. And then finally, avoid the sun in the peak summer hours between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. to reduce exposure. And you should note that tanning booths are not a solution for pre-tanning because all this is is essentially taking melanin, which is the pigmented molecule which helps absorb some radiation similar to an organic filter and dissipate it as heat. So when you tan, you're getting a higher exposure of UVA radiation and all you're, distrib all you're doing is just distributing this over a larger surface area. Almost like taking one bucket of paint and painting two houses rather than just one. It's not very effective or efficient and risks additional UVA radiation exposure. Final two points, clouds are still a type of environmental condition where UV radiation can get through and you can get burns. So continue to use it every single day when you're outside. And finally, if you're driving in a car for a long time and you might notice that if you're, on the, if you're the driver and on a US road, your hand can get burned through the window. That's because it doesn't filter out UVA. So sunburn is still possible inside of a car, so be aware of that as well. Here's your super succinct sunscreen specifics summary. Everyone needs it. For UVB coverage, look for an SPF 30 or higher. Please look for a broad spectrum to include UVA coverage as well. 
Use a water-resistant formula if you're going to be doing sports or swimming. Cover all exposed areas generously with 6 to 9 teaspoons. Apply the sunscreen 20 minutes before you go outside and repeat every 2 hours. Avoid sun from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. when it's most intense and use the screen daily if you're going to be outside. And don't forget your hat and your UV glasses. There's always a huge question with any type of medication or drug that's regulated by the FDA, such as sunscreen, in its safety. So is it safe to use sunscreen and what are the possible risks? There's always a question of vitamin D deficiency, but there's actually no association or proven link between using sunscreens and causing a deficiency in vitamin D. So you can safely use this. If you're on the border, just taking a vitamin D supplement is cheap, safe, and effective. Next. The inorganic filters, such as zinc oxide, there's no evidence that these absorb into the skin beyond the superficial layers, even on special microscope studies. So that's also another safe option. The only one where there's more question is with organic filters. So these are detected in the blood to a measurable degree, but there's no studies so far that prove that there's any harmful effects, and ongoing studies are being planned. If you are concerned about the blood exposure with an organic filter sunscreen, then just use inorganic because remember it's a broad spectrum and covers both UVA and UVB. And finally, you also might notice that some sunscreens offer PABA free or oxybenzone free. And what all this means is that in the dermatology world, some people have skin reactions, allergic reactions to some of the filters in the sunscreen. So if you're having an allergic reaction or you have a rash that occurs after an area where you've applied a sunscreen, you can just look for one of these formulations without these chemicals. And most of these are going to be similar to the products you find advertised towards child safe or safe for babies. Perfect. Now you're the sunscreen expert, so grab your bucket of sunscreen, get outside and have a great summer. Comment below if you have any questions, any feedback or any videos you'd like me to produce next. And as always, ask me whatever you want. See you soon.